Mr. President. Senator from Colorado. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I want to say what a great privilege it is to be out here today with my colleagues from Wyoming and, and my colleague, Senator Hickenlooper from Colorado, to celebrate uh, Pat O'Toole's uh, life. Pat O'Toole was a rancher, as you've heard, a conservationist whose family's sixth generation operation, the latter ranch, straddles the Colorado and, and Wyoming border, as my colleague from Wyoming said. The proud son of Irish immigrants, Pat was born in Pittsburgh, but like many of us, he felt a calling to the West. He attended Colorado State University, where he met his beloved wife, Sharon, who's here today. After graduation, they were both accepted into law school, Mr. President, but instead they pooled their savings to buy some old ewes and take over Sharon's family ranch. For, for eight years, they lived in a cabin on Ladder Ranch without electricity or running water. That might sound like a hardship to uh, a lot of people here, but knowing the two of them, I bet it wasn't. And they were in one of the most beautiful places uh, on this planet. In the summer, they camped while herding sheep, and bit by bit, they built their herd. Pat was a fervent advocate for the West. He cared deeply about all the wildlife in the West, the Colorado River, and protecting American agriculture. And Pat lived a life of service. He served as president, as you've heard, of the Family Farm Alliance for nearly 20 years. He sat on the boards of the Intermountain West Joint Venture and Solutions from the Land and was uh, with Senator Lummis, a, a member of the uh, Wyoming House of Representatives. When I came to the Senate in 2009, Pat was kind enough to recognize my failings and my uh, lack of background and lack of experience in the things that he cared most about. And he was kind enough to bring me up to speed on Colorado and Western agriculture. I'm still trying to catch up, but here, this is the photo I wanted to bring today. This is a photo of Pat telling me what I need to know about Western agriculture on his ranch. You can tell I'm listening more intently, Mr. President, than I often do, certainly on this floor but there was not a word you wanted to miss from Pat. There was nobody better to be the guide of people in this place so far from the ranch where he and Sharon raised their family. And we needed to listen because ranching touches every major Western issue, water, immigration, tribal rights, conservation, and even access to health care. Pat cared about all those things. Those who were lucky enough to know Pat know he had a lot of big ideas, and he had the drive to get those big ideas done. He was a doer, and he also had an amazing Rolodex. Most recently, Pat brought together a broad coalition with the goal of restoring the stressed landscapes of the route in Medicine Bow National Forest and the contiguous Yampa and Little Snake watersheds. My staff and I were honored to be included in that coalition. I should say, Mr. President, that was one of the amazing things about Pat. He could have cared less what your title was or whether you were a senator or not. He, his interactions with the staff were just as significant, I think, and just as meaningful for getting something done as they were with elected officials. And I, I hope and believe that that coalition will work to carry on Pat's legacy of conservation and tireless work to improve watershed health. In 2018, I had the pleasure to visit Pat's uh, ranch, nestled in the Little Snake River Valley, and saw firsthand the conservation practices that he and Sharon have put in place to restore fish habitat and improve the resilience of the operation. There are a lot of people that can learn from what they've done. 
After touring the ranch, Pat brought together people from all over the West, Republicans and Democrats, as Senator Barrasso said, it didn't matter, never talked about what party anybody was in, to join us on their porch for a big cookout while we talked about the new generation of ranchers in the West and how we can leave our kids and our grandkids a better future. He actually knew that the state line, that while the state line between uh, Colorado and Wyoming div technically divided the ranch, that a political boundary like that was not the important boundary. What he would tell you is that the watershed is what actually matters, and that's why it's not surprising that he brought together people, a rare occasion really for an elected official from Colorado to meet with people from the Wyoming legislature who were there that day to hear from what Pat um, had to say. And we, we covered topics on that day that ranged from conservation uh, 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 throughout the West to the, how we could work together to protect our water and leave a viable future for the next generation of farmers and ranchers. There were always young people around Pat, and there were that day, and when he brought people to Washington as well. And even though, as I mentioned, Pat and Sharon's house was in Wyoming, they made sure my staff and I had the farmhouse across the street on the Colorado side of the road, where we could spend the night under our own stars in our own state. And the next morning at the end of our visit, Pat showed me around the barns and shared with me a branding iron from the Ladder Ranch, which I still have in my office in Denver, although come to think of it, it could be more use here in Washington, D.C. Anyone who knew Pat knew about his love for his family, and he proudly brought his children and grandchildren into every aspect of the ranch. It's an ama amazing testament, I think, to uh, the way he approached that uh, world and that business and that enterprise, because each of us today is reminding people here today that he cherished the idea that their ranch raised cattle, sheep, horses, dogs, and children. I'm sure not in that order. And he managed the ranch with these kids and these grandkids in mind. I want to recognize Pat's wife, Sharon, uh, her daughter, Bridget, and, and, the gran and granddaughter, Siobhan, who are here in the gallery. They're carrying on Pat's legacy and the legacy of the Ladder Ranch. When I was flying back uh, last weekend from um, Ukraine, that's when I got a message that said that Pat had had a stroke and was in Grand Junction at the hospital. And um, I, I had the chance, I landed at uh, the airport in Ireland. I suppose there's some uh, there's something in that, and was able to have a conversation with Sharon, and the first thing she wanted to tell me, I mean, she was by Pat's side uh, in Grand Junction, the first thing she wanted to tell me was that, Sh that Siobhan was coming back here uh, to carry on Pat's legacy, uh, 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 to advocate uh, as part of the Intermountain Joint Venture fly-in. Pat was on the board of that, and, and they're all here today. And I want to thank them for traveling here to be here today. Our thoughts are with you and the entire uh, Pat O'Toole family, but really they're for all of us in the West that have lost his presence, but not his example. Pat's life is evidence that division is not the way to make progress in our country. It's not the way to make progress in American agriculture or when it comes to water. Pat showed us what it takes to make headway on some of the thorniest issues that we confront. We would do well to remember that example every day. He demonstrated the importance of finding common ground to build little by little towards something greater for the next generation, and at least with me, he showed infinite patience. I hope that's something that we can all carry on in his absence, 
He was larger than life, and we will miss him dearly. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor.